Hi there YouTube, this is Adam from Strawberry7. Um, I just wanted to show you how to use Office 2010 and especially how to use Word art within Office 2010. I've had quite a few users uh, confused over the new system and the way that Microsoft changed it. One of the key things to remember with the way that Office 2010 handles Word art is that it handles Word art a font as individual font objects and individual letters rather than one collective picture, which is how Word art used to be used in previous versions, Office 2003 and the previous versions. The difference for that is that you have to work with Word art in a different way. And that's what I want to show you in this video. If we begin by opening Office 2010, um, and then you'll notice if you've done what a lot of my users have done, which is go straight from, say, 2003 to 2010, uh, that the menu system and the layout is quite different. Office 2010, like Office 2000 system, rather than a menu system. I'll do another video which will go into more details about how this is different and the general layout and how to use this new system. So check out that video if you want to know more details uh, about that aspect of Office 2010. For now, if we go to Insert and then Word Art, you'll notice that there's a selection of templates that we can choose from. I'm just going to pick any one of these because um, it doesn't really matter because we're going to make be able to make changes and change whatever we like on the uh, on the word art anyway. This one, and it's now asking us to enter our text. So I'm going to enter the text orchard because that's uh, one of the schools that I look after. Now, the first mistake that a lot of my use they were trying to resize the box to resize the text. That's because in the older version where it was dealt with as a picture, that would work. But with this new version, like I said earlier, you have to deal with it as a normal font, as a normal piece of lettering rather than a picture. Resizing this box won't resize the text, as you can see. And the reason that it's better to leave the box alone is because if you start resizing it manually, it can then become problematic when you're resizing the text. So just undo that and highlight the text like we would a normal piece of text and then change it in the normal way just by going to home and then selecting the font size from here. I'm going to make mine 170. Uh, now you can see it doesn't fit on the page very well so we'll rotate the page so that it's in landscape view so we go to page layout and then you'll see the orientation button here which is greyed out that's because we need to select off of the text first and then we can select landscape as our preferred view. To align our text on the page, the easiest way is to select the text and then move on to the edge of the box and, and then go to More Layout Options and change the alignment here with the horizontal alignment. So we can go Alignment so that we want it centred, OK, and then it will be in the centre of the page. In a similar way, we can do the vertical alignment by saying more layout options, vertical alignment to the centre of the page, OK, and then it will align itself to the centre of the page. We can also rotate the text either to the left or the right as well. Um, by hovering over the green dot at the top here and you'll notice the icon change to a little arrow and if we hold the mouse button down uh, the icon changes again and we can see the left or to the right um, to create an angled text. If you wish to change the fill effect or the fill colour of your text then 
we simply highlight the text. Bear in mind that you can highlight either the entire text or you can actually only highlight half of it or even one single letter if you just want to make each letter a different colour or make each letter a different style. Um, so with it highlighted we then go to Drawing Tools and we've got various options here. This is where most of the um, options are for the word art effects. So if we deal with text fill first of all we can simply and it gives us a live preview below. We can go to more fill colours if the ones that are here are not sufficient or we can go to gradient and we can specify a gradient from Again, it gives us a live preview as we hover over each one. We can also go to More Gradients. Now, in More Gradients, what you can do is you can specify um, different gradient points and different gradient colours using this system down here to give you complete control. So, if we start by just removing some of these different points by highlighting them and clicking this button just here for the Remove um, tool, and just give ourselves two. If we simply make one white, one end white and the other end black, you'll see how it gives us that gradient effect on the text. We can alter, we can alter its brightness, and we can alter the direction. The next effect I'd like to show you is the general text effects which are up here and those include any of these so we've got shadow, reflection, glow, bevel, 3D rotation or transformation which is um, more the traditional word art uh, which was on the and don't forget that we can scroll it and there's a few more down there. The 3D rotation is one of my favourites because that was um, an improvement than 10 which um, which gave a, a very nice um, effect that you could put on your text uh, because for example you can combine these, you can make a 3D rotation um, which gives us quite a flat object and then what we can do is also do say a bevel on that as well to make it look raised and um, give it quite a nice uh, quite a nice look so let's pop that one on and uh, we can put a reflection on there as well. You'll notice that the effect, but then when we click on the text it brings it back. The reason it does that is so that it's easier to highlight and easier to work with. The last thing I'd like to show you is to put a background um, image behind the text and then make the text transparent. The reason that a lot of my users do this is because uh, working in schools they need to uh, do display work and it's quite nice to be able to cut letters out which have got a picture behind them and so what they do is make the text transparent almost of, um, of a word to cut out. On a picture, how to uh, do that. There are a couple of ways of doing this, um, and I'll try and show you both briefly so that you can decide which way is best for you. The first thing that I would do is, if you've already created your text, okay, the the best thing to do is to cut it so that you it's not on your page and it's not going to get hidden behind the picture. Um, and if you cut it, just remember not to copy anything, otherwise it'll overwrite it on the clipboard. So we'll do that first of all, so that's gone. The two different ways that we can do it are as follows. We can either go insert picture, pick our picture, size it, like so. Or the other way, which I personally find a little easier, is to page layout, page colour, fill effects, and then we can pick a picture from here, fill the entire page with it. So let's go with doing that first of all. We can now paste our text back in 
and you can see it's laid over the top. What we want to then do is highlight, go to Drawing Tools, go to Text Fill, and say No Fill. That will make our text transparent. We can then go, remember to keep it highlighted, we can then go to Text Outline, Light, so that it stands out as much as possible against the background. We can now print this out and actually cut round this with a pair of scissors or with a Stanley knife and use this as display work. There's something very, very important that you have to do in 2010, which confuses a lot of people. And I don't truly understand why Microsoft chose to do this uh, this way, but regardless, this is how you fix it. If you go to File and Print, you'll notice that a live preview appears on the right-hand side here. But the reason for this vault, page backgrounds are programmed to not print out. So what's happened here is there's no background, and then because our text is white, on what is now a white sheet, we can't see anything. To change this, go to Options, then go to Display, and tick this box here, which says Print Background Colours and Images. With that, go OK. Go back to File, Print, and you can now see that our picture background has appeared, and the text over the top of it has appeared. We can now print this and it will come out fine. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, then please put them below. Other than that, Check out my other videos if you're interested. Thanks again.